welcome to this and this will be my review or thoughts or whatever you want to call it for the uh, new Smackdown I guess All right, it's just Smackdown on uh, sci-fi now um, so because it's, it's on sci-fi which will be interesting to see what that does ratings wise it'll definitely go down but it'll be interesting to see how far down it goes could go down pretty significant maybe just maybe um, I might might start a little bit of debate on some things, maybe, 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 but maybe not. I don't think so. But anyways, so um, I didn't get to watch this thing live. Um, I was at work, so I had to watch it later. So I missed the whole them redoing NXT instead of doing, you know, a whatever. Um, I guess they were supposed to do some sort of uh, some sort of pre thing or something. I don't know. Anyways. So, we started with uh, Dolph Ziggler and MVP um, out, and they started, and it looked like it was going to be a pretty good little match, and then it was, then Nexus came out, because remember Nexus was supposed to be on the show, and Nexus came out and beat down both guys, and, and then uh, we had all sorts of crazy Nexus stuff happen, Wade Barrett was on the Titan Tron, Cena had come out, um, Big Show had come out, uh, and Wade Barrett announced that because he was friends with the guy that runs Sci-Fi, he was going to be able to make a little few, a few little matches, or a few little matches, a few matches. He was going to be able to book some matches with Teddy Long, and Teddy was basically just going to be there. Pretty good little segments. One of those things where Barrett just comes through, like you know, it's just so bad that the guy's just not as good in the ring as he is at everything else. So the guy would just be amazing. But, um, he might get there. So, I mean, you figure he'll get there at some point. I mean, he's only been doing this for, what, two, three years. So, anyways, he made, uh, let's see, he made a lumberjack match with, uh, Cena versus Kane with Nexus on the outside, and then a five on one handicap match versus Big Show with Nexus. So, there we go there. Um, then we had match two, which was Michelle McCool and Maurice and Alicia Fox taking on. Natalia, Kelly Kelly, and the Bella Twins. Yes. This was exactly what you probably think it was. Um, not very good, but it was what it was. Um, it led with, uh, you know, Natalia going over, which is, of course, McCool and Layla sort of, you know, goofy stuff. And, uh, they let, uh, Hornswoggle get involved, so it was there what it was. It, it, it got Natalia over, and, and not that anyone's going to care from the pay-per-view, but it did what it did. Uh, then we got Jack Swagger's All-American Homecoming Celebration thing. He came out with uh, two, uh, the Oklahoma Fight song, um, the Eagle mascot, and then and then got out there and started talking about Texas, because for those of you not, not, that does not do, that, that do not know, um, Oklahoma versus Texas is, uh, tomorrow, I guess, or, or today, by the time some of you, most of you see this, and that's a pretty big thing, and so he talked about that, and there we go. Um, then Edge came out, um, we had a lot of Raw guys on this show, which kind of, which kind of hurt the show, I thought, because it felt a lot more like Raw than it did SmackDown, but I'm sure that's what, uh, that's what they wanted, so, you know, whatever. Um... Then we got uh, uh, Cody Rhodes giving us grooming tips. I'm not big on the whole dashing Cody Rhodes stuff. I'm sure it's supposed to get that reaction, but I'm not big on it. Uh, then we got the Nexus versus the Big Show. Um, this was actually kind of good in the fact that Nexus went over. Yay. Um, of course, it was five on one, you would expect. But they got him in legs locks, scissors locks, uh, all the stuff for the win. Um, he went over. Uh, they killed him for some, for a little bit, and then, uh, so, there we go. So, uh, and then it was supposed to go over the point that, you know, what if, what are they going to do if they have John Cena with them? So, there we go there. Um, then they, you know, they hyped the pay-per-view a little bit, um, with the Kane Undertaker package, which was pretty good. Uh, then we got CM Punk versus The Undertaker. Now, <clears throat> this kind of was weird, and let me explain why. Um, even though it went fast, even though it was, you know, uh, Taker pretty much killing, uh, 
Punk and Taker has has uh, has a new look. I guess I guess I don't remember him having the hooded thing before, but anyways, um, and he, you know, there we go. But uh, yeah, this was pretty much a squash, but it, you know, I, I think it worked, but it also didn't work. The whole idea was that you know Paul Bearer was there, and you got the um, the urn, and you know Punk. Just had taken Undertaker to the limit a couple weeks ago, so now we're going to have, you know, Undertaker, now that he's got the urn and Paul Bearer, he's going to destroy Punk. But it really didn't come off that way. It just came off as just a really short TV match between two guys, and not the, oh my god, you know, this, that, and and the other. So, it was what it was. Um, uh, then we had uh, Rey Mysterio's big giant return, which was, which was pretty good. Um... You know, he, he didn't get his hands on Del Rio, which was good, and uh, but he did uh, kill Rodriguez, which that was pretty good, and he got to do the 619, so it was what it was. It, it, it furthered that feud a little bit. Then we got Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. Yes, more raw stuff, um, which went really like two minutes and was a very good. Um, then we got the Lumberjack match, and this was eh as well. Um, led to Undertaker coming out and killing Kane, so that served its purpose as well. There was a lot of just no con. This felt very much like Raw, but I think it did serve its purpose as it did make me actually want to see some of these matches that are going to be on the pay per view a little bit more, so it served its purpose that way. Not that I would buy the pay per view because it didn't do anything to make me want to buy the pay per view, but it did, you know, do its stuff that way. Um,. You know, we did get a Randy Orton Sheamus encounter, which I didn't need to see that. And there's nothing they're gonna be able to do to make me want to see Randy Orton versus Sheamus. I'm sorry, but uh, they 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 did the, the Kane Undertaker stuff prolonged a little bit more. The John Cena Nexus stuff that went along a little bit more, which was you know pretty good I thought. Um, but you know, it felt very much like a Raw, and it didn't feel like a SmackDown. We didn't get any really long good matches. Um, they were definitely trying to make this a, you know, by the pay-per-view type show, and it felt pretty much like a raw by the pay-per-view type show. And, eh, I, you know, I, I don't really think that works, but, hey, it is, I guess, what it is. Um, not, not my favorite episode of SmackDown ever, but, you know, like I said, it did do its job. It did make me want to see the pay-per-view at least a little bit more, even though it did make me want to watch, uh, only watch the pay-per-view, not necessarily buy the pay-per-view. So, they still have a ways to go there. But, you know, I guess so I guess an okay thing for Raw, for SmackDown, even though, you know, it did its job, but I, it still, you know, I didn't care for a lot of it, even though I, I think they could have done a lot of it separate, differently, separately, listen to me, differently. I think they could have not done a lot of it differently and done the same thing and maybe even gotten me to enjoy it a little bit more, but that's just me. So anyways, with that, I am out. I will talk to you guys later.